Hello everyone, this is Mason with TechFox and today we're doing yet another PC build. However, this is going to be a bit of a departure from our standard use case, a small form factor desktop PC capable of uh, running day trading software and also the recommended requirements if you're going to be a power user. It does recommend an i7 and a couple other unique features that are going to be showcased in this build that if you were going to be building it for a in a gaming setting, uh, aren't really going to seem optimal, but for the software it's going to be using, this is the best bang for buck uh, machine that we could come up with. However, it does have the possibility to expand with simply the addition of a graphics card if it ever is going to be used in the future as a gaming rig. So starting things off, we have the brand new uh, generation of processors, the Intel i7-7700 KB Lake processors. As you know, they're almost identical in architecture to the sixth generation processors. Slightly higher base clock and boost clock, a little bit more optimized and better manufactured. This is not the K version. Again, uh, this is not a gaming rig. We're not worried about overclocking it. We're not worried about um, installing any type of aftermarket cooling. Just the standard cooling solution that comes with the processor will be more than enough. But of course it is an i7. It's not gonna be a slouch by any regards and should be more than enough to power this workstation. Now for the RAM, we are using uh, the Corsair Vengeance 3000 megahertz, eight gigabytes, two sticks of four gigs. Uh, again, these are the uh, recommended settings for the software. However, this motherboard does have four slots. This is two sticks of RAM, so if you wanted to expand to 16 gigs, all you need to do is buy another package uh, of RAM and you'd be good to go. This is the motherboard to accompany the new seventh generation processor, MSI Bazooka B250, a micro ATX board. It does come with quite a few uh, features and it's relatively inexpensive, less than 80 bucks for this board, especially for uh, a board that supports the new Intel chipset. Very good buy. So we're excited to use it and it looks great. Okay, and powering this PC is this EVGA uh, 450 watt power supply. As you guys know, I am a fan of EVGA power supplies. This is gonna be more than enough to power this PC even if we doing, decide to include a graphics card in the future, this should be more than sufficient. Now, one thing that is going to be a problem that we haven't had to encounter before is cable management. Now, this is not a modular power supply, so you can't simply disconnect the cables that you're not going to use because we do wanna make sure that airflow is coming through the case and not being inhibited by a bunch of cables that we're not even using. Using. And we are going to have a lot of extra cables because the only thing that we're going to be powering uh, apart from, from the motherboard itself and the CPU is the hard drive. There's no optical drive, there's no SSD. Of course, those are optional upgrades in the future. Uh, the case does support that. But for right now, there are going to be quite a few extra cables and we'll have to get a little bit creative on where we put those. Speaking of the hard drive, we have this one terabyte WD Blue. You guys are probably recognize this from our previous build. Very quick for a mechanical hard drive, but of course we could upgrade to a solid state drive in the future if these begin to slow down, which they tend to do over time. For now, this is an absolutely uh, perfect, perfect application for a hard drive. Okay, and this little guy here is the Fractal Design uh, Core 1000, the smallest case we've actually featured on this channel. It's a great case for the buy. I was surprised by the number of premium features that it includes for costing less than $40. Uh, when this case first came out, uh, one of the biggest complaints that it did not include a USB 3.0 port, this one does, and it did so without increasing that $40 price point. Uh, excellent buy, buy if you're going for a workstation PC on a budget. This is going to satisfy your needs, and it does support full-size graphics cards and an optical drive if those are upgrades that we want to look into in the future. And with that, we will cut to the build.
that was one of the easiest and quickest builds I've ever done for a number of factors. First of all, it's not a modular power supply, so all the cables you need are already all plugged in, which you can debate takes more or less time depending on the amount of cable management you have to do. But in this particular case, there's no space behind the motherboard, so really the cable management doesn't matter a whole lot apart from wanting to make sure that you're not restricting your airflow. Uh, second of all, it went very quick because the uh, processor cooler that ships with this Intel processor because it's a non-K version is very simple to install. It literally just snaps onto the motherboard. No screws required. Uh, it already comes with a um, little bit of thermal paste applied to the surface of the cooler. So you literally just pop it on place in the orientation that you want it and you're good to go. And honestly, in my experience, the most time consuming part of any build, uh, apart from the cable management, is applying the cooler to the processor. So with those two factors out of the way, this build went extremely fast. Well, this was fun. It was interesting doing something with a little bit of a different use case. Obviously, we approach this build with a different perspective than our traditional gaming PCs. However, if you do ever want to game with this machine in the future, it's fun knowing that all you need to do is put in the graphics card of your choosing and you're off to the races. But thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. If you want to see previous builds that we've done, go ahead and check those out here. We did a Hackintosh build. You can check that out right there. Uh, a little while ago, that was a lot of fun. Subscribe if you want to see uh, future content coming off this channel. And also check out in the video description below if you want to purchase any of the parts that are featured in this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.